guys, welcome to another episode of Cruising with Cherisy. Cherisy Chambers here alongside James Clemens High Head Football Coach Wade Waldrop. Thanks for joining me. Oh yeah, fun. Looking forward to it. Oh yeah. Can I tell that you kind of put me out there, put me on the spot? I just saw, <laughs> saw other people doing it and you know, I wanted to want to get it on the, the charity train. <laughs> yes, I came out to practice last week. You kind of called me out a little bit, uh, but I have been wanting to do a ride along with you. I know you're a busy man, so thanks for taking out yeah, time. Yep. Oh yeah, first things first, you know, we got to talk about the Bob Jones game yep. last week. Last last year was the first time that y'all had ever beaten them. You come back through it the second year in a row. What did you tell the team after the game? Um, proud of them. Um, you know, kids played really hard. I, I thought for the third straight week, you know, they've battled and competed really, really tough. Um, overcame some adversity Friday night, you know, um, thought we let down a little bit during that game midway through the second quarter, but I thought they got really refocused at halftime and did a great job of finishing the game. So just proud of them, but you know, it's a, it's a region win. That's what's important. And, um, you know, we've got another one this week. So I mean, you really don't get a lot of time to, to think about it and right. enjoy it. Right. I mean, offensively, you guys had no turnovers, no interceptions, no fumbles lost. Tell me what kind of what kind of aided to your success offensively against Bob Jones? Yeah, we were able to run the football. Um, I thought our offensive line played really, really well. Um, they played like we've expected them to play all year, and um, you know I thought we saw signs of it in our first ball game against Grayson, and then you know for whatever reason in the second ball game against Clay, they, they did a really good job. We just didn't we didn't play to our ability level that night up there and challenged them this week back or last week during practice. You know, hey, y'all, y'all have got to come for this game, and, and y'all have got to play. It's time, and they they rose to that challenge. I thought they did a great job. Yeah, yes, sir. Defensively, in the fourth quarter, you guys really kind of shut them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The defense played well uh, again. Outside of yeah. they had, you know, Bob Jones had two really good drives. Where I think they went six plays, two drives and six plays, uh, three plays each, throwing the football. And again, I thought just our, our focus there was not you know, uh, maybe playing the ball the way we need to play the ball, just kind of not necessarily going through the motions, but not 100% locked in. A couple of the guys on the back end came in at halftime and they owned it. They, they stepped up in front of the whole team and said, look, we let y'all down, it's on us, it will not happen this second half. And, you know, um, they held up their end of the deal and I, I was proud of them. We were able to turn the football over on them a few times and, and, you know, did a great job in the kicking game. So that, you know, if we can do those things every week, you know, we've got a chance to be a good team. Yeah. Going up against Huntsville this week, they're going into the game 3-0. Seem to be a different type of team this year, have a lot going for them. What have you seen from them so yeah, far? Yeah, I mean, they're doing a good job running the football. They're they're controlling the line of scrimmage in each of the three games that they play. Um, um, you know, defensively, they look very similar to what they did a year ago from a scheme standpoint. Um, you know, I've got a couple of really good players on the defensive line, and, uh, you know, the running back's having a good year. They've got a really good receiver. Um, offensive line is big, so they, they've got pieces to the puzzle. Um, got a kicker that, you know, a lot like ours, is going to kick in the end zone every time and make you go 80 yards, which at our level, if you have to go 80 yards, it's harder to score. You know? I don't think your record is indicative of how good you guys are because the first two games you really played some top ranked opponents and really hung with them in there, especially the Craig Chalkable game. Yeah, um, I, I think we've got a good football team. Um, if we can stay healthy, you know, I, I think this team can be very special. Um, you know, one thing coming in, a lot of people kind of went under the radar, I guess. This is probably the most experienced team we've had since I've been at James Clemens, and that includes some of the really good teams that we had, you know, really talented teams that we had a few years back. Um, a lot of these kids were, were major parts of our success last year, and, uh, you know, it, it's good from a coaching standpoint coming in. Playing Grayson early on, you know, we kind of backdoored into that game. Um, you know, I, I was really proud of our kids. That was an extremely talented team coming from Georgia. Um, you know, played well, and then then we played Chalkle game. But you know, truthfully, the coaching side of it disappointed. Those there, those were both games. Had we just done a few things better as a coaching staff, and you know, gotten that message down to our players better, more effectively, you know, we could have been in a better position to win both of those games. So, you know. They're big games. They were they were fun, um, but man, they hurt losing, and it, it felt really good Friday night to get a win. We needed that bad. Yeah, and how does that kind of maybe help the mentality moving into once again another region game? Yeah, and I think it's helped. Um, you know, everybody's got a little smile on their face. Um, of course, you know, everybody in school today is patting you on the back and, and make sure 
we handle that the right way, and I, I think our kids have. They've, it's a, again, it's an experienced group, it's a mature group, and um, you know I don't see them handling it, handling it in the wrong way. Now, at your years at James Clemens, you've had quite a few guys go on to play D1 ball starting at these major programs. What do you think, how does that feel as a coach, seeing those guys go on and do that? It's, it's really cool. It's special. Um, I think right now we've got 23 kids. Um, I realized we had another one yesterday playing over at Tennessee Valley Prep. So I think we've got 23 kids right now playing at the next level. And, um, you know, that's a, to be able to play at that level, they have to have that talent and that ability. That's nothing we necessarily put in them. It's something they were born with, God-given ability. Um, but I will say the program's done a good job of equipping these kids to go in and being successful at those programs and making it in those programs. Because there's a difference in getting there and, and then getting there and being a major part of it, being a leader in the program and, you know, having sustainability. And, um, you know, we've not had a kid come back to us say, you know, hey, coach, y'all didn't prepare me. You know, it's always been coach, man, I, I was ready to be there. You know, I, th what we're doing there, it's, it's like we did it, you know, when we were at James Clemens, you know, y'all pushed us hard, y'all made us ready. And um, that's that's special and, and not only for the kids playing, but, you know, having those same same conversations with kids when they go out and they get in the other parts of their jobs and their lives and they say, you know, you prepared me for, for the things I was going to have to deal with to be a, you know, to be a good employee or to be a good, you know, husband or father, or brother. And, um, you know, that's what we try to build the program on. Yeah, what does that mean to you as a coach when kids do come back and they tell you stuff, how you've impacted them beyond the football? No, uh, it, it's great. And, and that's that's the ultimate high in the profession. Uh, truth, at least for me, it is. Um, you know, I'd be lying to say the winning, you know, the winning's a high. You don't really get to focus on the winning during the season. Um, and, you know, the losses hurt a lot more than the wins feel good. Um, but the relationships and to see the growth of a, of a kid, especially now we've been here for a while, we've got good in lines with our seventh grade and eighth grade. So to start seeing these kids in seventh and eighth grade, watch them grow up, watch them mature, um, watch them make mistakes, but then learn from those mistakes and become better, you know, better people and better students. That's, um, man, that's great. That's the best part of it. Yeah, and I see you out there going to some of these college games that you coach, guys you coached in high school and stuff like that. I'm sure they appreciate all that. Oh, they, they do, yeah, and it's fun. Um, you know, got four kids at home, so it, it's been really hard over the last uh, four or five, four years at least to be able to leave and, and go do those things. Right. But we've got one now that's old enough to kind of take care of the household when we're gone. So hopefully Mama and I can go out and see more of these guys and get to spend more time with them and their families. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about this off camera, but you actually played college ball. You went to UAB, right? Yeah, they let me hang around for five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't, I didn't know that. You're yeah. a kicker, right? Yeah, I was, I was a punter and a kicker. Yeah, I actually got on the field as a holder to start, start off with. I was really? very, very, very average at all things. Yeah, <laughs> um, just I, I was grateful for that opportunity. I was a walk-on. Um, you know, I say it all the time. Coach Brown, he trusted me enough to put me on the field. So that, that from a player perspective, means you know as much as anything, being trusted and trusted with playing time at that level and being able to go out and represent the university. It was. You know, it was a cool time. Um, well, my wife and I were both Blazers. She danced there, and um, you know, we, we bleed green and gold. Is that how y'all met? Because she was on the dancing and you're football. Well, dancing? yeah, she yeah, she was a few years behind me. So when I when I finished, I worked as a an academic advisor um, for the athletic department. So um, actually knew who Kimberly was. We we're across across the street one day there by the Hill Center, and I was looking for tutors to try to come into our department and, and ask. Asked Kimberly, hey, would you be interested in being a tutor? And she, of course, signed on. And I think during that first year, she probably made more money than I did as a, as a tutor coordinator. Um, but uh, just the relationship grew there. And, um, you know, we, we've been married now for 15 years. 15 years. And you have four kids, right? Where are the ages again? So, yeah, we've got four children. Carson, um, she's 13. She's the teenager. Loves to dance. Uh, got a 10-year-old that cheers with JC every Friday night. Um, Got an eight-year-old son, um, and then got a, a four-year-old daughter, and she takes care of all of us. I mean, she <laughs> runs the house. Yep. I love it. What's your favorite thing outside of football? Did you? That's probably hard to say. Well, for me and Kimberly both, it, it's family. We are we're together. You know, whenever we're not doing ball, ball does take up. It consumes a lot of time. Um, she's a school teacher. Um, you know, we we try to spend time 
as a as a family when we're out. Um, used to play golf. You know, that was before I guess the, the children came. Um, were you any good at golf? I got better. I got to, when I got to play a little bit. I did get a little bit better, but it, you know, it's maybe once a year now. I don't get those opportunities, but definitely spending time with them and. Um, um, you know, hanging out at the pool, we're beach people, lake people, pool people, love being outside. Where are you from? I, I grew up in Hartzell. Grew up so, in Hartzell, and then I know you coached at Chelsea, um, Chelsea right? yeah. So I moved moved to Birmingham, um, going to UAB in 94, and stayed there until, you know, seven years ago. Um, and uh, loved our time in Birmingham. It, it was great. Started out coaching at a, um, a small 1A school with 94 kids in the entire high school. Uh, K through 12 was on one campus. It was in Talladega County, a little school called Fayetteville, right outside of Childersburg in Sylacauga. Um, was the head boys basketball coach. My first year was a defensive coordinator in football, and um, it, it was it was one of the best three years of my life. Um, enjoyed it. Uh, you talk about really getting to form relationships with players. You know, the entire basketball team that I coached played football, and, and I, you know, had seventh through seventh grade through twelfth grade in a classroom pretty much every day at, at different points in time. So you really got to know each other and you got to spend a lot of time. And, um, you know, as an older coach, I, I guess I've been in it now 18 years, 19 years. I'd love to be able to go back, you know, and, and if you could ever go back in time, go back and spend time with them, having more experience now to do a better job with them. But um, I still get I still get an email, text messages, you know, every week. Hey, coach, good luck this week. Hey, yeah, saw y'all won last week from some of those guys on that first team. So. It's um, it's really cool. Yeah, that's also sounds a lot like the school I went to growing up, really small, but like really got to know your teachers and the students. I love that. This is your seventh year. Seventh year at James Clemens. Yep, and, and it's been you know it, it's been it's been very re rewarding. Um, it's been challenging. Um, you know, starting from the year when we got here, and, and just seeing what the previous staff and the, the kids when we got here had to go through when the school was being uh, built or just starting that first year. Um, it was hard. It was hard on those kids. It was hard on the families. Um, they were not ready physically or mentally to jump in and play 6 eight football the first year that the school was built. So for, for two years there was a lot more um, um, psychology going on than there was in football. Just trying to get these young kids who had really never been in a varsity locker room and seen a uh, a junior or a senior football player that you know acts the way they're supposed to act, work the way they're supposed to work. These kids had no one to model that after, and um, you know when we got here, um, we, we finally figured out as coaches after that first year is like, look guys, we, we talk a lot about you know you got to act like a senior, you know we need you to be a leader. Well, we were preaching something to them that they had no clue, they had never seen, so they didn't have an experience to draw back on. So we had to start trying to model that a little bit and. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing, if we could have done it a little different, knowing that coming in, I think we may could have gotten through some of the bumps and bruises earlier than what we did. But, um, you know, it's, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life as far as coming in to, to start this thing and trying to get the mindset where it needed to be to be successful. Well, thank you so much for joining me on another edition of Cruising with Charity. Yeah, this was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. it.